My name is Taylor Walraven, and I will be reciting the poem, The Spider and the Fly, by Mary Howitt. Will you step into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Tis the prettiest little parlor that you ever did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair, and I have many pretty things to show when you are there. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. To ask me is in vain, for who goes up your winding stair can ne'er come down again. I'm sure you must be weary, dear, with soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed, said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn around, the sheets are fine and thin. And if you like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. Oh, no, no, said the little fly, for I've often heard it said, They never, never wake again who sleep upon your bed. Said the cunning spider to the fly, Dear friend, what shall I do? To prove the warm affection I've always felt for you. I have within my pantry the store of all that's nice. I'm sure you're very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? <clears throat> oh, no, no, said the little fly. Kind sir, that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry, and I do not wish to see. Sweet creature, said the spider, you're witty and you're wise. How handsome are your gauzy wings, how brilliant are your eyes. I have a little looking glass upon my parlor shelf. And if you'll step in one moment, dear, you shall behold yourself. I thank you, gentle sir, for what you're pleased to say. And bidding you good morning now, I'll call another day. The spider turned him round about and went into his den, for well he knew the silly fly would soon be back again. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. And he went back to his door again and merrily did sing. Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with the pearl and silver wing. Your robes are green and purple. There's a crest upon your head. Your eyes are like a diamond bright, but mine are dull as lead. At last, alas, how very soon this silly little fly, hearing his wildly flattering words, came slowly flitting by. With buzzing wings, she hung aloft, and near and near she drew, thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue thinking only of her crested head. Poor foolish thing. At last up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast and dragged her up er, and dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den, into his little parlor, but she ne'er came out again. And now, dear little children, who may this story be, to idle silly flattering words I pray you ne'er give heed. Unto an evil counselor, both heart and ear and eye, and take a lesson from this tale, the spider and the fly. All right, good job. Nice memory, good volume. We could hear you nice and good. Um, when you picture a fly and a spider, what is the difference between these two animals? What is a, a fly like? It's small. Okay. So what type of voice would a fly have? A little voice. Okay. And then the spider. What what kind of character is the spider here? Like, kind of mean. Okay. And what is the spider trying to do to the fly? Eat him. Right. <laughs> so he's trying to lure him into his web. And the spider at first is like, no, 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 I can't do this. I know I'm not going to come out. But what happens? He ends up going because what does the spider do? He eats the fly at the end. He does, but before that, how does he get the, spy, the fly to come? He sings to him. Okay, so he is flattering him and saying all these, you're so beautiful, look at those wings, and all of these nice things. So as you are going through this poem, try to have those characteristics that we know of these characters in the way you say their lines. Okay, so the very first line First of all, will you step into my parlor, take a little bit of a break, don't run right into said the spider to the fly. Because it's the spider talking and then just like as narration, letting your audience know who it is that's talking. Take a little bit of a break there so it doesn't all run together. And try to have voices that match these two insects. Okay, no, spider's not really an insect, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, Make it sound very appealing. Tis the prettiest little parlor that you ever did spy. Try to really make the fly want to see 
this parlor as you're describing it. Um, where is it? Okay, picture exactly in your mind what it looks like, where it is. Use your, your gestures, your hands to show us where to go, what to do. Look at how beautiful you are. Okay, so including your whole entire body into your, your words that you're describing to make it come to life even more. And by picturing in your own mind all of these things that you're talking about and describing, us as your audience members will be able to do the same exact thing. Okay, we will see this spider web and we'll try to be a little afraid for the fly here. No, don't listen. He's trying to flatter you. Don't listen. It'll draw us in more to it. Okay, so taking your time there and not just getting out all of these words, which you did very well, but thinking about the story along with it as well. Okay, and you could even do some with the fly. I, I picture like a little fly going like this. Because you know how, have you ever seen a fly? They'll be standing and then all of a sudden they'll be doing something with their front feet. Just kind of what I picture with this fly as he's <laughs> talking and he's afraid. So let's show him being very afraid at the beginning and then, oh, well maybe I am so beautiful. Maybe I do want to come see this place. So kind of seeing that change in him as the poem progresses. Okay? Good job. Thank you.